Hey guys, welcome to the Ultimate USMLE Parathyroid Video Part 1. So, I'm going to start out my lecture on parathyroid hormones by just reiterating that it promotes osteoclast activity in the bone primarily. It also um, acts on the osteocytic matrix of the bone, but what you really need to know, it just promotes the release of calcium and to a lesser extent phosphate into the blood. Now it also promotes reabsorption of calcium and this is at the ascending loop of Henle, the collecting tubule, and the distal tubule. So it promotes reabsorption of calcium so that it is goes back into the blood and not out into the urine. And it promotes excretion of phosphate from the proximal tubule. So in a normal response, to fluctuating calcium levels. So say you have a decrease in calcium, you should have a concomitant increase in PTH. So it should cause um, an increase in parathyroid hormone and also if you have an increase in calcium, it should cause a decrease in parathyroid hormone. And Organs that you should just think about, um, just keep this in your head for now, um, are the small intestine and kidney, and I'll get back to it. But say you have a parathyroid gland, and it is hyperactive. There is an adenoma or adenomas or hyperplasia that is secreting out lots of parathyroid hormone. So it's got a mind of its own. And so it's secreting lots of parathyroid hormone. So you're going to have an increase in PTH. And notice that all around, if you have an increase in PTH, you're going to have an increase in calcium. So it's going to have an increase in PTH, an increase in calcium, and as far as phosphate goes, it's kind of iffy because, see, it promotes the osteoclast, which does release some phosphate into the blood, but not as much as it does calcium. But then again, it promotes the excretion of phosphate from the kidney. So the phosphate could be normal. It just really depends. It could be normal. It could be increased. It just really depends. Um, but now I want you to consider something else. So we've talked about a parathyroid hormone with a mind of its own, and that's primary hyperparathyroidism. Now, what if, and I mentioned that the parathyroid gland responds to fluctuating calcium levels. So say your calcium is decreased for some reason. And that reason is that you have a vitamin D deficiency. So you have less vitamin D and consequently you're going to have less calcium. So your parathyroid hormone is going to respond and sorry, your parathyroid gland is going to respond and it's going to secrete out more parathyroid hormone. All right. And in this case, you were going to also have a for absolute decrease in phosphate 
because we're talking about the vitamin D here, and vitamin D promotes absorption of both phosphate and calcium. It's not just really as discriminatory as the parathyroid hormone. So you're going to have a decrease in both phosphate and calcium in a secondary, and this is secondary because it's due to secondary causes. So now we've gone over primary hyperparathyroidism, secondary hyperparathyroidism, and now finally I'm going to go over tertiary hyperparathyroidism. So now tertiary, to have a tertiary hyperparathyroidism, the prerequisite is a primary. So the prereq is, sorry, the prereq is a secondary hyperparathyroidism. So what happens is, your parathyroid hormone is stimulated, or your parathyroid gland is stimulated so much because of the low calcium that it starts to become, have a mind of its own. So what happens is it then starts to increase the calcium level. And your phosphate is decreased in this case. And this is also associated with kidney failure because in kidney failure, remember, you need uh, the conversion of, in the kidney, you convert the inactive form of vitamin D to the active form. So, this is associated with kidney failure. And you've reached the end of my video. Please subscribe.